All right. So it's Matt Morozik. This is day three, work in progress number two on this Gravin Labs, Gravin Labs Hulk kit. So yesterday was all day was laying down the skin towns and uh, looking at it today, it looks really good. A lot of times I have to look at something like a day later because you spend so much time looking at something. You're like, is this really good? <laughs> so uh, usually it's the next morning when I look at something, oh yeah, it actually looks really good. So all the effort really paid off. Um, I'm really digging. There's like little hints of really cool areas like right here, you can kind of see the those blood vessels underneath the skin. Um, it's just really, again, it takes me, like I said, when I spend eight, nine, 10 hours spraying skin, after a while I'm just like, I just wanna be done, but <laughs> I don't wanna rush it and make sure I get everything looking really good. This looks fabulous. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, paint the pants and do the nails. Um, so that'll take a good amount of time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Silly Putty to mask off the pants and then um, I'll brush touch any edges. Um, actually, I might do what I, I might do a John Allred, um, which actually works pretty good. He always cuts in first and then sprays paint. So these are gonna go purple, but I can do this bottom edge a dark purple because it's a shadow. So I've got some craft paint here. Um, let's see how this looks. I'm gonna do a little test here. I organized, I spent some time cleaning up the workspace the other day because after the aqua, man, there was shit everywhere. <laughs> it was, it was a mess. So it's, I sometimes gotta take a day to just do some upkeep. Okay, so this is just, um, I need as acrylic paint. Uh, this is just called grape. Um, we'll see how this looks because again, these are craft paints. There's not a ton of, I mean, you're only paying like 99 cents a bottle. So there's not a lot of pigment in them. So we'll see how this looks. But I, I would have to do this anyway after, it's one reason I'm not a huge fan of Silly Putty a lot of times is I don't wanna, is it, I can't get a super sharp edge with it. There's all, it's got a thickness to it where tape um, doesn't. Now what I could also do is this up here. I've got my washi tape here. I could mask the pants and let's do a tape test on this. And when I do a tape test, I put the tape down. I'm testing on the bottom of the foot just in case. And then I rip it off. And that lets me know that I've got good paint adhesion. So. I think we're gonna go ahead and mask this rather than do silly putty. You know what? I take that back. Cause it's such an odd shape. Um, it would be really hard to get tape up in there. So I'm going back. I'm just gonna, <laughs> and this is how I work. I think I'm gonna do one thing that changed my mind and change my mind again. I think we're gonna go, go ahead and cut this in with this purple. And again, it's very, um, thin paint, there's not a lot of pigment. If I do this now and let this dry, I don't have to be so careful of my silly putty. I already have an edge established. Let me take two coats. I really just care. I only care really right right on the uh, where the pants meet the skin. That's all I really care about as far as getting paint on. So in the last video I did yesterday, I did some time lapses, which is great, but it adds a ton of time to my video editing because I don't do a lot of, I don't do any video editing, but um, when I was on a Mac, I loved using iMovie. It's really, it was super easy to use. Um, I could 
drop in sound clips really easily. I have like um, the whole Adobe suite, but I haven't learned any of the video software. So I've got like, was it Premiere, Adobe Premiere, whatever it is, the high the high dollar video software. Cause I just subscribe to the whole suite every month. I really need to learn that. But um, it added probably just having to go in and do sound clips and edit it and editing. And I also I, have, I forgot to have my microphone on what two of the clips I had to do voiceover. Um, so the video was made sense. So it normally takes me a few minutes just to upload. It took me a couple hours. So I was up to like one o'clock last night just trying to get the video ready. And then I just uploaded it. This, I'm just uploading it now. So. All right. So I think you get the idea here. I'm just going to go in and cut this in. I get a little showers of a toothpick ready. I never do. That's my favorite little kind of mini brush. I bite the tip off. So it's not a sharp edge and I just can go in there and with some saliva and just wipe away any little mistakes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this, cut in all around the edges. And then uh, I'll show you what that looks like when I come back. Okay, so I got the edges um, cut in and I got silly putty on everything and wrapped the legs in um, some saran wrap. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a base color of just my number 67 purple, same color I used yesterday um, for the noodling. And we'll see how this looks. And then we'll do some shading and all that fun stuff. So the color I put on the edges is a little darker than this. This is fine because I'll probably um, I may have to go back and retouch the edges up a little bit after I get done with this, but it's no big deal. So let's see. What do I have? There? Mm, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna test, test something real quick. I'm not sure this cup will work. It's, this may melt. I'm out of mixing cups, so I'm, let's see if this this kind of cup is resilient too. Mr. Color Thinner. Let's see if it starts to melt or not. I know the other cups I have are not good. This seems to be okay. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. <laughs> this could work, it could be a disaster. Okay. This is more than what I need, but I'm going to keep some of it to go back and do some blending after I do some shading. spray these out here just real lightly so if I don't get a lot of overspray I thought about just going and base coating with the craft paint um, but I want something that's pretty durable here I, I think the craft paint is okay after it's been co uh, top coated um, Otherwise, it's pretty susceptible to scratches and stuff. This airbrush is giving me such fits. Every time I try to go paint, it just clogs up. And I 
cleaned it like four times yesterday. Again, the tip of that be clogged with something. Luckily, he kind of stands by himself without being on the base. Okay, I got to switch here, This is just ridiculous. This needs to tear down and cleaning big time. Brushes are due for a really good strip down. Get over there and get out of the way. Got this one too. Uh, I'm gonna pause and come back. Okay, so I just went to the spray booth and, and uh, painted this with the uh, I want HPTH the big gun. Let this dry for a little bit, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to add uh, a really bright highlight, and I'm gonna add some shadows using the Garage Kits that US Grayscale. I'm using the Cool Range. So I'm gonna use like the number one for the highlight, and I'll go in real lightly with number seven for the shadows. And then once that's done, I'll mist on the purple again and it should tie it all together. So I need to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll do the highlighting shadow and then hopefully one layer of blending. And then I may come in here and do a little bit of uh, dry brushing on the fringe of the, um, where it's torn um, a little bit. And then after that, we'll seal it. And then we're gonna hand paint um, this part, which is uh, the white. And I think we're gonna do, he wants white. I, I personally don't like it, just stark white. So <laughs> I think it looks stupid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a light gray and then dry brush some white on it. So it's just not one color because that, it just makes sense to me. So um, hopefully he likes that because that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so once we, uh, this dries a little bit, I'll come back and do some uh, shading. Okay, so it's dry for a few minutes. Now we're going with this uh, Garage Kiss Day US uh, number one cool gray semi-transparent. And I found, I forgot that I had this, um, make one with this. This is uh, the same dye I used on the, in the clear cut on the base of the Aquaman. This is a, a really vibrant violet uh, tint that I bought for um, when I was working with, you know, experimenting with uh, uh, chrome plating. So, all right, so highlights. I'm going here and hit these wrinkles pretty hard. I won't be hitting like the big muscles and stuff. Um, just mostly the, the wrinkles. Cause this, I don't want to get any brighter than the purple I have already. So that's why I'm not going to hit the muscle with this.
Okay, so I think it's the idea. When I come back, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit some of these shadows now with this dark color. You're hitting the, the deepest recesses. And I'll probably um, use that die for the final step. See what I'm doing, but just going and adding shadows to all the areas. I'll uh, come back when I'm done with that. Okay, so I got shadows and highlights. Now we go back in the spray booth. I'm going to go ahead and mist on some of this, the regular purple, kind of just knocking it down, blending it in, and then we'll see what it looks like. And then I'll probably go back in, probably with this. Um, we'll see what this dye looks like, and I may hit the shadows again after that. Hopefully, that'll get me where I want to be. So after I this on some purple, I'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, you probably can't see it in camera because it's shiny, but I missed it on about two or three coats over thin purple, and it tied everything together very nicely, so I'm really happy with this. So now I'm gonna think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try going in with this dye and see if this uh, works or it just totally screws everything up. We'll see. It's pretty, uh, I like it because it's more uh, a deeper purple, which I think is what we're going to go for. So I'm going to go in and hit the shadows first. And then we're going to maybe miss on a coat.
this is a violet dye from Angel Gilbert. It's super, um, what do I say? Um, Thatcher is like really vibrant. We're gonna go in here and hit the shadow to see what it does. I'm digging that. Basically, I'm gonna kind of bring out the muscles. And then they go mist on a really light coat of this because it's really um, potent. <laughs> Of course, this airbrush I'm using is just pissing me off. <clears throat> After I do this and mist this down, I may have to um, mist on another color of my purple. Another color of my purple. Sure, you guys can see that because it's, sh it's shiny right now. Until I see it, it's gonna be hard to see me shading. So I think I'm gonna go mist on a real light coat of this. Yeah, see it comes down it. On this overall. And then we'll um back and look at it.
Okay. Yeah, it's a little punchy right now. It's fine. I'm gonna bring it back. You can't see what I'm doing some over here. Yeah, I'm gonna go miss the coat of this on, kind of darken it all, and then I'll bring it back up with a little bit of purple. Okay, so I think this looks good. I went through and I missed some more purple on. Uh, so we're gonna take this silly putty and stuff off now, and then we'll um, probably go steal this, just steal the legs and everything all at once. I want that dry for a little bit. I'll check my edges, see how they look. I didn't get any purple on the green anywhere. I tend to get, go a little crazy with masking, but I'd rather go crazy with masking than mess up hours and hours and hours of work from yesterday. I'm gonna do this over here. And I want to take this. I want to um, take this off before I seal it because I tend to get issues with the silly putty after I seal it, wanting to lift because I put the sealer on relatively thick, and I always have problems. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> yeah, you probably can't see the shading yet. I can see a little bit. But once I seal it, it'll really pop. It's hard to see uh, shading when something's shiny. I don't want to touch the purple. It's probably dry to the touch, but still. Come on. This program gets stuck to itself. It's hard to get off sometimes. And then I'll do a double check, make sure I didn't get any bleed through or overspray anywhere they don't want it before I seal this. But I think we look good. Yeah, it's a good shade of purple because this purple by itself is a little too bright. So I want to knock it down. I'm out of, uh, again, one of my favorite colors is the Mr. Color uh, GX Clear Violet or Dark Purple. It's a great, Tone for shading purple. Um, I didn't have that, so I did use what I had. All right, so I'm gonna double check this. I'm gonna seal this really well and probably let it dry for a good hour, 45 minutes, and then we'll go in and do the trim. So uh, once that's dry, we'll come back and do that. Okay, so I sealed everything and it's dried down a little bit, and this is what we got. Looks really good. Let me see if I come down a little bit. Color a little bit better. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. There was it's about three or four different tones of purple going on there. You can see the nice subtle shading. I think this looks really good. So uh, the purple's done. Um, I'm contemplating whether I'm gonna hand paint the white or if I'm gonna go in there and silly putty it. I think hand painting is probably the way to go. I think I need to go get some more white. So I'm gonna use, um, I like the Vallejo, it covers really well. Uh, the craft paint would take like 20 coats to, to to hand paint that. So 
Uh, I'm gonna run to the hobby store here in a second and get some more Vallejo white. But that looks good, I think. So yeah, so next thing is we're gonna do the, the white trim, the white torn part. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I'm going in, I mixed up kind of a uh, medium gray, light gray, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna first cut in everything on the pants. And I'm not gonna show a lot of this, cause I'll be able to move this guy around a lot. And then I'll determine if I wanna just go hand, and hand pan everything, or if I wanna silly putty and airbrush it, but so far this is covering really well. There's just a lot of little nooks and crannies to get into, so I won't show, I won't be able to show a lot of this on, on camera, but it's simply just hand painting. Um, uh, the, the, the tears. It's just a slow process. Just like that, so. All right, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so I got that all base coat, took two coats. Now I'm doing is I'm going around and touching up the edges where I kind of messed up a little bit. And all I'm doing is taking a little bit of this black craft paint on a brush. And I'm just kind of, I'm going around the edge where I messed up and I just put a little bit on there like this. And then to blend it out, I just dampen it with some, with, in, my, <laughs> in my mouth. And I just go in here and I just kind of blend it out like this. I just get a little, get a little damp and I just blend it out and it creates a little shadow. Um, around that torn pant. And I think I got too much there. Just get my brush damp a little bit. I'm just putting it in my mouth <laughs> and just blending it out like this. And it creates a little shadow, touches up the edge, and cleans it up real nicely. So I'm doing that all the way around. Anywhere I need to. Sometimes I just put a little fine black line. I don't need to blend it out if it's like in a deep shadow, like right here. I don't need to blend it out because it's, it's a deep shadow. So, top side. Yeah, so we're just cleaning up the edges. just about there and then I'll seal this and then we'll go from there all right well fuck um, I got it all painted and everything went to go seal it and it turned to purple. So the um, top coat reacted with the Vallejo paint for some reason. Don't know why, it's never done that before. So I gotta let this dry and then I gotta repaint it again, which sucks because it took me about two hours to do that. So um, I probably won't get to the nails today. Um, I was hoping to get start working on the nails, but if I get the pants done, I'm good. So I gotta let this dry. I'm gonna repaint it, let it dry really good and then I'll seal it. Actually, I may actually go in here and silly putty this now and spray it with uh, a lacquer uh, since it did this. So I'll do that and then I'll come back and show it to you. Alexa. Okay, well, so I took this opportunity to, uh, since I got this all silly putty, I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this um, and do some shading that way. So I'm going to start off with number seven, semi-transparent cool gray, garagekiss.us. And I'll just touch up the edges um, when I'm done. 
because I'll have some edges to touch up. One reason I don't like using silly putties because um, there's always touch ups to do. You just can't get it as thin as tape and it doesn't. I mean, it's got pluses and minuses. One of the pluses is that it, it doesn't, it doesn't um, stick real well. So it, chances of lifting paint are basically almost zero. I've had it lift before, but then that's also a downfall. It doesn't stick very well, so it's really easy to, to disturb. Um, and the other downfall is that it's just not as thin as tape, so you can never get a super, super thin edge against the surface you're masking, so there's always touch-ups. Sometimes the touch-ups take longer than this part, and they usually do. So I wasn't gonna try to get the pants and the nails done today, but it looks like I'm just gonna get the pants done. So I'll just call this the pants work in progress. And then tomorrow, I'll work on the nails. Hopefully those go smoothly. And then um, I can work on the portrait too. I'm sure I'll get, I don't know if I'll get the nails and portrait done on the same day. Portraits usually take me a good part of a day to do. So this is the number seven, semi-transparent gray, cool, cool tone. Number seven is basically, it's almost black. And I'll just go with the number, uh, number two or maybe number three for highlights. In the long run, it's probably a good thing I'm having to do this because I think I'll get a better, a better result than trying to do dry brushing and stuff. base coat. I think it was pretty quick. Make sure you got all the undercuts. Those I don't mind those stay really, really dark because that'll just be a shadow. I think I'll do is I'll do a light seal on this after I'm done with this and then take the silly putty off. Let's see how we look. Okay, so that's the number seven. I'm gonna go with uh let's go with number two. Let's see what that does. Gonna hit the high spots.
you can see that when I turn the air pressure down, this doesn't atomize as well. I'm just gonna like the lacquers better. So for this, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna fog it in pretty well. Do this real subtle shading on this. edge a little bit. Okay. Now I'm just going to add some number one to this. Just going to add it right to this and I'm actually gonna kind of make my own cross between the white and the number two. So it's not 100% white. That's looking pretty good. Here's my top down, just kind of helps add a little more shape. You gotta build this up slowly because as this dries down, uh, your shading will be more obvious. So, these semi transparent when you first put it on, it may look like you're obliterating any shading you did, but once it dries down a little bit, you'll see that's there. Okay. 
now what I'll probably do is I'll probably um to get this looking pretty good. Just just about there. Pretty happy with this. I'll um just going with I'll spray just top down the number one. Just add some more shape to everything. some white or number one I should say spray straight down I do have this actually isn't white I have an element that's white This is looking good. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna give it a light seal and then I'll take the silly putty off. We'll see how bad the touch-ups are. Okay, well, it looks pretty good. Touch-ups aren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. I'm just gonna go back and do what I did earlier, just with some dark, really dark purple slash black along the edges and um, touch them up. So like, um, here's one right here. And just kind of wet my brush a little bit and a little shadow. That's pretty good. So I'm just gonna do this around anywhere I need touch up. And then I'll seal it again lightly so I don't get a reaction. I really don't know why that happened. I never had that happen before. I'm just dabbing a Q-tip here because I got a little too much paint on there, so. There's no way you can blend it. So I'm gonna touch this up, seal it, and come back. Okay, well, the pants are finally done. Man, that <laughs> took me <laughs> twice as long as it should have. Um, but they look really good. I'm really happy with them. I love the purple. Um, super vibrant, great shading. Uh, I like the tears. The tears is like a cool white. It's really nice. Um, it looks really well. It goes perfect with the purple. So the same color tone. So it's got a little hint of blue in it. Looks really good. Um, so yeah, those look good. Super happy. I can't put the torso on right now because I just sealed it. That's got to dry. Um, but so tomorrow I'll work on the nails first and then we'll see how long those take me. Um, and then maybe I'll work on the portrait too. My goal was to have everything done except for the base by Friday. So I could have this wrapped up on Friday, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. We'll try. 
But uh, so I'm just gonna call this work in progress done. Should be a relatively short one in, <laughs> compared to what I normally do, but um, that's a good little video on how I got the purple and stuff. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.